So what I'd like to demonstrate to you now is a practical example of information being mapped and presented simultaneously. So I'm going to run through this as a, as a reasonably brief presentation, and I'm going to do it based on the kinds of challenges we're finding in business today. If you think about it, the result that virtually every organization is trying to achieve today is that they're increasingly being pressured to deliver on their brand promise, to deliver for customers what they tell customers they're able to do. And we also know that to do that effectively, you have to have what we call a high performance culture you, because the brand promise is delivered by people. Uh, but ultimately, what every business is striving to achieve is they want to be profitable and they want their business to be sustainable into the future. So what do most businesses have in place to be able to do that? Well, essentially, most of us or most organizations we talk to have got the right products. They've got their product and their offering that they want to take to market. They've got the right people in place. They've got the, the people are skilled. They know what they're doing. They're motivated. They're excited about being in the business. The enablers are in place. The processes and systems that enable people to deliver that brand promise are in place and the IT is available to give them what they need. And for most of these businesses, they have a proven track record in what they're doing. So they, they, they're actually known in that marketplace. But what for most of them is still needed is they need their team to really buy into what they're trying to achieve. In other words, the team to buy into the objectives and to demonstrate that through their behaviors. We see values in organizations espoused all over the walls, but the reality is the values mean nothing if we don't drop, drop those down and drill them down to actually identifying the behaviors that underpin them. Then we need people to share their knowledge, to, 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 to come to the party and, and share ideas and, and work towards being able to deliver that brand promise. And that requires us to develop empowered teams who are engaged in the business, who feel confident about what they're doing. So how do we do that? Well, we're saying the ideal way to do that, in fact, is to be absolutely clear about our objectives. Be sure that we know what our objectives are and that everybody understands what our objectives are and what we're trying to achieve. And then make sure that our leadership underpin that and behave it and, and demonstrate those behaviors as well that help us achieve those objectives. And then we do know we have to give people a nice work environment, a place where they feel comfortable and happy to come to work. And then, very importantly, relook our resources and say, what tools and techniques do we empower our people with so they can deliver on our brand promise? So the question now, of course, is how to practically make this happen. And essentially what we have found in working with people, particularly facilitating workshops, is that Generation X and Generation Y today are saying involve us in the business, engage us, give us a challenge, make us feel part of this business. And so what that says is we really do have to increasingly today trust our people to develop the answers that we want. But we also do know we must give them the right tools and make sure they have the know-how to be able to do this and then figure out ways in which we can increasingly involve them in the business. And the only and the easiest way to do this is instead of telling people what to do, start changing our mindset and our culture in the organization to one of saying, this is what we're trying to achieve. How can you help us get there? What do you think we should be doing to achieve the objectives of, of that we're trying to get to? And what that essentially means is we need to start translating our meeting agendas into questions that we ask people and engaging them and getting responses to the questions. And that really says that ultimately the aim is to change our culture in the organization, one of telling people what to do, to now asking people how they can help us get where we want to get to. So the recommendation that we're making is that we need to give people the scope and the opportunity to do the thinking. And there are many ways of doing that. Uh, mind mapping, there are a whole host of techniques. And we're saying one of them that we're talking about here today is the thought generator, the think pod, the something that, that encourages that thinking. And then to say, at the same time, let's make sure people have got some of the skills that will actually help them so they don't have to go through too much pain in getting to being able to use the, t the, the tool effectively. And one of the things we do is we, so we're saying it needs no more than one day. And during that one day, what we also do is we customize certain templates for the organization. So, for example, if you have a sales team who have to hand over to a production team, 
what is the process that we go through for doing that? Can we templatize that and make it sure that we do, we answer the right questions every time we do that? Or IT providing an additional service for the company, or marketing and sales interfaces. So in other words, what are the kinds of things we're doing regularly in the business that we need to be answering uh, in terms of a question? And we're saying that the process, as seen in the other clips, is pretty much the same. We have to gather information each time we want to think about something. Have we got the right information? We need to then display or map that information and make sure it's available for us to work with. And then very importantly, once we've got it into a logical flow and it makes sense, we need to present that information for a decision. So just going into a little more depth on the three elements of the gather, the mapping, and the presenting. We're saying the gathering of information is we need to know what information we need. What information do we need? How are we going to go about getting it? Are there any guidelines or, or issues that we can use as a, as, a, as, a, as a path? In other words, do we have any templates or questions that make sure we gather all the information we need and the right information? And in terms of the mapping, what we're saying there is this is simply the displaying of the thinking that has taken place. We need it out there so as we can start to debate those issues. But more importantly, what we're able to do is once we've debated them, we need to be able to create a flow and a logic, but also be able to add new thoughts. And ultimately, we need to be able to have a record of what we've discussed here. And that's simply a case of taking photographs of the sheets and you've got a record of everything that was covered and displayed and talked about. But more importantly, you're able to drop it down into something like PowerPoint or Word, and you can have an image and you can add notes around it as part of the minutes if that would help. Or simply capture these ideas onto something like a mind map, which, uh, which means you've got the whole record on one page and easy for people to absorb and understand. So we've got that in place. And, and the presentation we're saying in presenting, what's important there is making sure that we actually convey a meaningful message that we tell a story, that we make it flow and seem like it has uh, a logic attached to it. And wherever possible, stop and add the audience input. Ask them what they think. Let, tell them they can interrupt you and give their input as we're going. Uh, because then what you're able to do is debate what's displayed and get to much more consensus with, with the group and reach the kind of decisions that you want. Now, of course, there better be benefits of doing this. And typically, the benefits are that because you're breaking the group up into small teams to go and discuss issues and come up with solutions, what you're doing is you're getting them engaged. You're making them feel part of the business, which in a lot of organizations, I'm afraid to say they don't. So they will be part of the team. They will feel engaged. And they will feel empowered and more inclined towards really applying their minds to addressing those issues. The thinking is now done, so you've got the whole lot of thinking. You've got the thinking available to work with. You're saving a huge amount of meeting time because the process is so much quicker than having to go through all of the thinking in a big group. And you ultimately do arrive at better decisions. And then a, a very important component is it gives, uh, under pressure, middle management the time to think. They can now start to apply their minds more strategically they're actually being, feeling comfortable about giving their more junior staff the opportunity to explore these opportunities, un unpack issues, and come up with solutions. And all of that has a, a major role in building trust and confidence in the group, making better decisions that help us deliver on that brand promise. Now, of course, one of the things that will occur to you is this all sounds great, but what is the cost of an intervention to help us develop this thinking process in our organizations? And obviously that is going to be very dependent on the, on the number of people that you want to, to work with. But essentially we're talking about using a day and being able to, to, uh, to tackle that. And uh, it, uh, it has to demonstrate cost effectiveness, otherwise you wouldn't want to do it. And then the other question that will occur to you is how many delegates at a time? And that will vary, but typically we try to avoid exceeding more than about 15 people in, a, in an intervention of this nature to try and make sure that everybody gets a chance to, to work with the tool. So what we've effectively done here is we have used, I have used a template to display and present this information to you. Each one of these steps is part of a template. And so the next step is for your organization to start winning and, and being more sustainable and delivering on your brand promise. The only thing we really need to do is figure out what date we should run that intervention and where we should do it. For more information, 
contact Peter Thomas. Telephone number 0825582817. Email address Peter T at participlan.co.za. All of this information is available on our website www.participlan.co.za.